Hello everyone, this is Zach Zaldivar, and... It's Jane. Talk to the microphone. It's Jane. Jane, Jane. It's Jane Dixon. Thank you, Jane Dixon. <laughs> we are here today, video number three of their Know Thyself series, uh, of the Know Thyself series, and we're really, really pumped because we're talking about friendship, which on the surface maybe doesn't seem like something that's directly like personal, obviously talking about your personality and the temperaments, talking about your gifts, but we're talking about friends and kind of the impact they have. Do you want to explain a little bit as to like why we wanted this in the first place like as a topic? Yeah. So part of knowing yourself is knowing who you surround yourself with mm -hmm. and who you're spending the most time with because ultimately those people, those interactions are yeah. going to shape who you are in your in your core. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just important to know the, the people in your life and the type of friendships that you have. Like why they're there, too. Yeah, like, like the purpose what is, of them. Yeah, what is the purpose? And I think especially in this time of isolation, the one thing that has come up the most when we ask the high schoolers or middle schoolers, like, what do you miss most about being on this court? Like, what do you miss about, like, the real life, the normal world or whatever? And everyone says, I miss my friends. I miss, I miss spending time with my friends. And I feel that, too. You know, having, like... Uh, I had a lot of friends move or change duty stations or get out of the army while I was in. It was really hard on me because like you grew in a relationship with them and then all of a sudden you couldn't see them. And I think it's probably even harder now because your friends are still in their house. They're still maybe even next door. We had somebody say like, I miss, I miss hanging out with my friends and I have my best friend lives yeah. right next door and I can't hang out with them. So like that's really hard. So my two best friends are in the state. And, not, and they're they live out of state. Yeah. And I can't actually go and hang out with them. <laughs> so, to be specific, we're actually using uh, Aristotelian. So, Aristotle, Greek philosopher. Whoa. He, yeah, I know. I'm getting fancy. Used. Didn't go to college, ladies and gentlemen. And I know all this. Isn't it crazy? Uh, Arist Aristotelian. Yes, exactly. Jane knows it. Uh, but he basically, he, this Greek philosopher, he came up with these three different sort of types of friendship. And the first one is friends based on utility. And those are the friends that... You, it's just mutual, mutually beneficial to like be friends with them. And I don't mean like you're using them or they're using you. That is kind of how it works out, but it's for the gain of both of you. Think of uh, on a soccer team. Everyone is working in their individual position, but if you're not fulfilling your role to the you know the best of your potential, it hurts the rest of the team. It hurts those around you. So those are the friends uh, you would have that are kind of based on a mutual benefit. Or in class, those who you work yeah. on a project with, those who you study with. Maybe you don't see them outside of that sport or outside of that classroom, but because it's 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 more beneficial to you to be friendly with these people, uh, you're going to be. The next uh, level of friendship is friendship based on pleasure or fun. Those are the friends that you would have slumbies with. You would, you would, you would go to the movies with, you hang out. Like, like basically the majority of what you do is just like fun and games. You're just hanging out. It's not a lot of depth to it. Slumbies. Slumbies, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and then the third level, which is what we're kind of striving to this, like, perfection uh, this uh, of friendship, mm -hmm. per, or friendship, rather, perfected, is friendship based on virtue, which meaning that you and this group or this person are aspiring to be better. You're striving to be better. And, and in our, you know, in our case, you know, thinking as, as Catholics, we're pursuing Christ. We're pursuing the Lord. Do you have any examples you want to share with, you know, one of those types of... Yeah, the first thing that kind of pokes out is... Um, my senior year of college, mm -hmm. we had this capstone class, and it's like every HDFS major kind of dreads it. It's a lot of work, and there's a group of six of us in mm -hmm. this group together, and we got along really, really well. Yeah. But once our capstone was done, like we were spending like six hours a day together <laughs> in the weeks leading yeah. up to our capstone presentation, and once it was over, we didn't really talk to each other, and like it was kind of over, but like. We still had like we had a good friendship yeah. in in the friendship of utility. Think think how uh, brutal it would have been if you wouldn't have been friendly in those in that <laughs> scenario. Six hours a day acting unkind or yeah. unflexible if you're just like not being flexible with their needs or. And I knew groups that had that issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about like friends like based in 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 virtue? Because there is overlap, oh, yeah. I think. I mean. So it's like I mean. The on-running joke at this point is that I bring up Nora and and or Rachel in every single like, they, video live stream or anything. Met them. Rachel, Nora, my best friends. <laughs> You've never heard of them. Not ringing a bell. 
So as you guys know, Rachel and Nora, they're my best friends. Um, and we we met both of the, these relationships. I met in Catholic settings. Mm -hmm. um, so with Rachel, I met her my sophomore year of high school in youth group. Um, and our friendship kind of blossomed from there. Yeah. It was Christ-centered. And with Nora, like, we met in Totus Tuus, where we're working for the Catholic Church, teaching kids all yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, naturally, they kind of started in that friendship of virtue. But as they grew, they kind of became more friendships of pleasure, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we're hanging out and... Um, doing fun things together, just going to get coffee together. Yeah, yeah, or, it's not just necessarily in that environment where, like, you are specifically here and united mm -hmm. to glorify the Lord for this specific purpose. Yeah. And it started to be more of a casual kind of, like, let's go get coffee, let's go yeah. have a But in that, we are, we're striving for virtue together yeah. as well, which is important. Yeah, I, I think you, there definitely, you guys need to recognize the overlap that, like, uh, one friend that you have, and if you just kind of sat down and thought about, like, the three people maybe that you've communicated with throughout this uh, quarantine and who that who they are and, like, why you've reached out to them, they probably fill multiple of these categories at different times. And that's kind of how it's supposed to be. But obviously, if you're in a, in, in a friendship or a friend group in which it's solely based on the, you know, uh, utility and it's just kind of... Uh, like Jane described, her college setting, taking taking a, a project underway, what can happen is once that project's over, like you no longer have a friendship, you no longer have a use. So it's important that we're striving for like that ultimate goal and like really examining those people and like and not just how they're impacting you, but how you're impacting them. And I know you, you Jane always talks about. Um, well, I'll let you explain the, the, the five people. Yeah, well, I don't know where I heard this, but I heard it in a talk or something yeah. somewhere. But it was you become like the five people you're around the most. Um, or, in another way to phrase it, show me show me your five best friends and I'll show you who you'll become. Yeah. And that, like, struck me to the core because it's like, I want to be holy, I want to be a saint, mm -hmm. I want to be uh, someone striving for virtue, obviously. Um, and there has definitely been times in my life where the five people I was surrounded yeah. by the most weren't wanting that, yeah. and therefore I was not really, that wasn't my sole concern or sole desire in those yeah. times of my life. But right now, this the time of my life, mm -hmm. I, the five people I'm surrounded by the most, or interacting with the most since quarantine, um, but are like you, my two roommates who are both Catholic. That's great why she's women, so awesome right now. Whatever. Um, and then my two best friends, Nora and Rachel, and I'm talking with them every day, FaceTiming, all these things, and yeah, I'm striving for virtue. I, I, I see myself trying to be better and pray yeah. more and um, be a better roommate, a better coworker, mm -hmm. all these things. But there has definitely been times where the five people I was around the most weren't encouraging me to do that in any way. Um, so I, I want to encourage you all to take a step back, look at those people in your life that you are surrounded by the most, and look at their their actions, their their goals. Um, are they striving for virtue? Are they striving for sanctity? Mm -hmm. um, and if not, it, it might be time to like reconsider some yeah. friendships. Are they making you go in a path that you don't necessarily want to go down? Um, and also, I would just add to that, like, look at yourself and, like, where your goals are and where, what you're oriented towards. Because it's not just about those friends around you. It's also about, also about you and, like, how you're impacting their life. Because if you're stagnant in place, if you're, if, like, if you're the friend who always uh, uh, wants to just, you know, who treats their body like crap and just, you know, maybe you smoke or you eat fast food every day, like, and, and the, like, whenever you're with those friends, that's what you're going to go do. So, like, examine your life, examine those around you, because when I was doing the research for, for this, this video, something that stood out to me was this quote that said, eventually, we will either rise to or fall to the level of our friends, our friendships, meaning that we're either going to aspire for more or we're going to regress and we're going to fall to, you know, being okay and just living in sin. And I don't mean you can't be friends with, like, anyone who sins, because you wouldn't have any friends, but... Are they striving to be better? Are they striving for you know, sanctification, to be holy, to, to know the Lord more? I think those are really, really important things. And even just the small day-to-day -day things. Are they, do they stay on top of like, their, their homework and assignments? Are, are they accountable of themselves in their family and in your friendship with them? And then 
obviously examine yourself in that too. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that pretty much concludes the rest of the video. Do you have anything else you want to add? No. Um, just that we miss you. We love you. Um, if you have any prayer requests, please reach out. Or questions about this. Maybe you didn't understand something about the previous video or this video. Uh, we'd if love you have to ideas for that. future videos. Yeah, yeah. Think anything like that. Yeah, we're open to, to any any suggestions. We just, we miss seeing you guys. It's far less exciting talking to a camera. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. We love you. We love you. We miss you. Bye. Bye.